you guys have been following my channel for a while, you may remember that about a year ago, I upgraded my fueling system. When I got back from the full-size invasion out in Moab, it was fairly obvious that the factory tank was not going to work for me anymore. The placement of it was uh, poor. It wasn't sealing. There was a whole myriad of issues with it. I upgraded to a fuel cell, but I royally screwed up the install. I've had a bunch of band-aids and patches on the system for about eight months now to try and make it work. And I finally admitted defeat and I'm pleased to report I'm putting an all new fuel system into the LQ9. I'm gonna be moving from a return less system to a return system. I've got a new pump, got new lines, got no fuel rails, regulator, it's going in and it's gonna be good. We'll get into exactly how bad I screwed up the fueling and how lucky I am that the truck didn't burn down on this week's episode of Merrick's Garage. Jazz Products introduced me to a new Holly product that I was not aware of when I initially did my tank and uh, fuel cell install. And it is a Holly fuel pump. Well, it's actually, it's a Walbro high flow fuel pump that is housed in a Holly sending unit that's made out of uh, aluminum and stainless steel and everything's all wired together. It's a plug-in system for the Jazz fuel cells. Holly has been in the business of making big power for years and they know fueling. After talking to the experts at Holly, it was determined that uh, a new fuel system was in order. I do want to thank Holly for uh, supporting my dream to build the ultimate K5 Blazer and uh, their belief in this channel. And I want to thank you guys for enabling me to have this platform and bring you guys this cool content. So big shout out to Holly. Thank you for coming on board with Merrick's Garage. The Jazz fuel cell is gonna go back in. I've got a Holly pump and sending unit going in. I've also got regulators and filters and we're doing some new fuel rails. This was a major screw up. I actually considered for uh, all of five seconds not sharing this with you guys and just kinda moving on but the reality is, that's not my style. I, I wanna share with you guys the highs and the lows, uh, my successes and my failures. I'm actually gonna be doing a separate video on pure failure, because I've had a lot of them. But this one could have been rather dangerous. In fact, it still is rather dangerous, which is why I wanna get this thing fixed as soon as I can. Having fuel, uh, I mean, even right now, the smell is pretty strong, but raw fuel anywhere is a danger. But let me show you the kick in the pants that really sealed this for me. Here's the fuel tank as it sits right now. Now, it's it's not terrible. I mean, if this was fully sealed and everything worked well, it would be great. The ring that I set up here, this is actually functioning and doing a decent job. This is a problem. And it's because of the valleys in the fuel cell itself. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you were to run this fuel cell without the external tank that I've got, the, the red enclosure, you could use these straps. In fact, this is what you would use to secure the fuel cell down. Now, obviously I'm not gonna be using those straps. And so these are kind of redundant for me, but what they do unfortunately provide is limited space along the top to put a sending unit, a filler cap, uh, a um, gas gauge, and all the other stuff that you need. Or do they? This happens to be a square. And when I installed it, I somehow missed that obvious point and convinced myself that this was the orientation that it needed to go in. Now, a square doesn't care about orientation. Problem solved. Now, this has solved a significant problem by putting the sending unit, the filler cap, and the pump all in the same spot. But as you can see, I no longer have the issue of being into the valleys, which is where I wasn't sealing. I could have avoided this all from the beginning if I had just taken my time, not being an idiot, and understood basic geometry. Regardless, this is gonna work super well. I do have to transfer the vent line over to here. 
But that's it. And we'll be good to go with a awesome sealed fuel cell. Regardless, you can see that uh, there is a lot of residual buildup from the desert. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's just constantly wet up here from fuel spilling. The other concern I have too is all of this, I would be willing to bet is inside the tank and probably pretty close to clogging up the filter and the sock filter if it hasn't already. Now I know this may seem minor and inconsequential in the grand scheme of things, but it isn't. It's actually fairly significant. Uh, a couple of reasons. Not having a pressurized fuel cell means that uh, my pump's gonna be working harder. Not having a fully sealed system means that I have environmental concern, I have safety concern, I have uh, fueling and performance concerns, I have uh, uh, all kinds of other problems that could arise from having fuel just wafting through the cabin of my truck and pouring it onto the ground. So I'm uh, pretty embarrassed about this. Uh, it was a total screw up on my part. Fuel system has been band-aided together. It's time to fix all that. Let me show you what the new system is going to be in composed of, and we'll talk about all the pieces going into it. This is the current setup that I am using. This is a, a Turbo SS intake off a Silverado SS. Gives me a little bit bigger of a throttle body and gives me uh, bigger injectors and uh, better flow than the factory intake, which is still a great intake. But I will be retrofitting the fuel rails these orange guys right here will be getting replaced. This crossover will be getting replaced. And instead of having just this one fuel line delivering fuel, I will be having obviously the two in the return system. As the fuel goes through the rail, I need to figure out how I'm gonna mount this guy. Using these, these trick tabs again, these guys are great because with the trick tabs, I can pretty much weld on to the cage where I want it to go. See the trick tab right there is going to give me the option to mount this guy where it's best going to work off of the cage. Now this, this might be where it goes. It's actually not a terrible spot for it. And essentially the fuel will run through the driver side, passenger side rail over to the driver side rail back through into the regulator and back to the tank. The heart of the system is going to be this new Holly sending unit and dual high flow pumps. It comes fully assembled. These stationary stainless steel rods are what you will use to set the depth for your particular tank. But the bolt pattern is very familiar for those of you with a fuel cell and incorporating both the filler cap, the return line, and the supply line all into one sending unit is not only going to save space, complexity, and real estate on the tank, but also make for a clean and tidy install. The dual pumps can be run either individually or together. Very, very cool. Leaving the pump will deliver us to the inline fuel filter that will then deliver the lines and the fuel to the passenger side of the engine. The fuel rails will deliver fuel through the fuel injectors and then through more fuel line over to the driver's side fuel rail. Once again, four injectors there delivering the metered fuel to each cylinder computer controlled through the TAC module and the PCM, then exiting the fuel rail, heading into the regulator. I'll set the pressure off of the gauge on the front and then back to the tank. A um, return system is an improvement. A returnless is nice in terms of packaging, uh, having to only run one a single line, but a return system is actually gonna give you a more immediate and accurate fuel delivery. It's fun to be at this stage in the build where I'm no longer doing um, major renovation and fabrication work, at least at this moment, and I'm starting to do refining work, like tuning the suspension and fixing the fuel system and tweaking the fuel system. It's a, it's a cool place to be in where I'm now able to really kind of start narrowing the truck's focus down so it works as efficiently and effectively as I can make it. Fixing the fuel system is a big part of that. Not having to worry about uh, clogging up the lines with sand from the desert or having it leak and my truck burn down is going to be awesome. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There's many more like it. Look up here. I've got a link to some other videos that you guys might like. And make sure to give me a subscribe. Merrick's Garage.